Okay, modelers, welcome back to another news feed. Uh, this week we've just got a couple of future releases that I'm interested in that caught my eye that are coming up that I think are, are pretty cool. Uh, also got a couple of uh, new products that have just hit the market that I'm, I'm interested in as well. Um, so we'll run through those. <clears throat> At the end of this video, um, I want to talk about some pictures that some people have sent in and just, you know, I'll put those up on the screen obviously as I talk about them. Um, it's fantastic. I've had a really fantastic um, group of photos come in and um, people telling me where they work and where they live and their workspace and stuff like that. So that's awesome, guys. Keep that stuff coming. I absolutely love it. So anyway, the first re future release we got coming up is from Dragon and it's the IDF M3 half track. Now this thing looks fantastic. It's, uh, as you'll see by the photos that go up on the screen here, very, very detailed. Looks like it comes with a lot of stowage as well, which is awesome. It's great to have that option. It's really good to see manufacturers throwing in some stowage and, and things like that. Whereas before you had to buy it all aftermarket or you know, you had to go and raid other kits to get the stowage out and put on there sort of thing. But this one here looks like it comes with a fair bit of stowage with it. Um, it looks really highly detailed going by the pictures that, that you can see there, the 3D art and that that's up for it. Um, they've even got that bit of box art there showing the you know photo etch detail and stuff in it. So this thing is looking really beautifully detailed guys. We can't have enough half tracks as far as I'm concerned, I love them. Um, we have quite a few of the German version. Um, we have now, thanks to Dragon, got quite a few of the, the Allied versions as well. And having an IDF version is just fantastic. I think this is just a great thing by, by Dragon to be bringing this out. So keep your eye out for this, guys, when it comes out. Obviously, the links for all these things I talk about are going to be below uh, in the description box. So you can click on these and go and check them out for yourself. Uh, the next release we got is the Airfix 148. Supermarine Walrus. Now, I love the look of this thing. This is going to be absolutely beautiful. Just going by the 3D art so far, and I mean, okay, the, I know Airfix is hyping it because it's their product, but just reading through the information, this thing's going to be sweet. Um, I just love it because it's different. Um, it, it's just an ugly bird, which makes it beautiful in my eyes. You know what I'm like, guys? Like, the, the uglier it is, the more beautiful it is. As weird as that sounds, that's what I'm like. Uh, but this thing looks superb guys, looks like some really nice detail in it. It's going to be interesting to see what sort of interior detail they put in this thing because uh, obviously the walrus has got quite a bit of glass there you can see in there so um, it's going to be nice to see if they put um, some interior detail into this but going by Airfix's new releases that they, they're coming out with they are really superb guys so keep your eyes out for this it's, it's looking really fantastic and 48 scale it's going to be quite a, quite a size but it's just going to be beautiful. Um, the other thing I'm hoping they do is detail the engine nicely um, because the thing's going to be sitting out in the middle of the wing there. It's, it's going to be like a, a focal point of, of that aircraft, that, that beautiful big engine sitting out there in the middle of nowhere. Okay, next up, guys, we're going to have a couple. I'm going to talk about a couple of new product releases now. The first one is from AK Interactive and it's called uh, Washable Agent. Now, what this does, you can mix it apparently with any acrylic paint and it makes that paint washable, which means, you know, when we do our winter whitewash, where we do chipping and stuff like that, and they already sell a whitewash um, paint, but you can paint it on there, then use water to brush over it and wash it back off to give you the winter effect. But this stuff here, apparently, you can mix it with any acrylic paint, so that means you can do lots of wear and tear effects with this stuff, if it works the way they're saying it does. I'm really, really hoping it does. I'm a little bit iffy on can you, can you mix it with any acrylic paint because uh, there's so many different um, compounds that make up all the different acrylic paints these days and we all know some thinners don't go with others and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see this washable, washable agent goes with every type of paint because I don't know about you guys but I collect, I have heaps of different types of paint, um, Tamiya, Mr Hobby, um, AK, MA, I've got all the different brands. And it'd be great if this stuff does work with all of them, um, rather than just a couple of brands, and that way it's, you're going to be forced to have to use those brands with it. But I think this is a fantastic idea if it works, guys. Really looking forward to trying this stuff out. Um, I was going to order it off their site, but being in Australia, and that stuff's got to come from over in Europe, where, and, and it's got to, by the time it ships over, it's going to be twice as much for the shipping as it is for the product. So. I give that a miss, I'm going to wait till it comes out on the market and hopefully I'll be able to pick it up a little bit cheaper from somewhere. But really looking forward to getting my hands on this. If any of you guys do get your hands on it, 
let me know how it goes um, and, and I'll put it up in a video and, and we'll, we'll put the feed out and let everybody know what the stuff's like because I think it's a great idea. Uh, next off <clears throat> next off the mark is MIG. It's got oil paints that already that come in a little stick like a little tube looking thing with a brush. So you unscrew it, pull it out and the brush is part of that handle. Um, now the idea is as you're pulling it out apparently there's a little um, ring there that wipes the excess off the brush and you can use it straight onto the model. Now when I first seen them being used, I thought, oh yeah, great idea, but then I was thinking, honestly, it's, it's probably just a gimmick. It, it looks, you know, the more you think about it, the more it's just a gimmick, because it's just oil paint in a tube, it's just, there's a brush stuck in there. That's all it is. So, you can get the same thing by using their, their oil paints and just using a fine brush and dipping it in the end of the tube. So, it's, it, it is a gimmicky thing, but I guess it's ease of use, as in you don't have to wash your brushes and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's part of the paint. So. It'll, it'll be part of it and you don't have to worry about it. Just put the lid back on, put it away and away you go. Um, obviously the oil paint that's in there will be their brand which is very very good stuff to use for models obviously. Um, I do think it's a little bit gimmicky. I, I would like to try probably one. I'll probably order one at some stage and try it. Um, and I'll just see what it's like. I mean when I'm using oil paints it, it's depending on what effect I'm after as to what type of brush I, I'm going to use which that leads me, like I say, I think it's a novelty thing because you haven't got a choice of what brush is in there, it's just that one little pointy brush. But I will order one guys and, and um, once I use it I'll, I'll do a, you know, a couple of little bits of footage and I'll put it up and I'll let you know, you know what it's like. Okay, the next little thing I want to talk about is in the last news video I was talking about uh, all the, the King Tigers that are coming out from Tackham um, and Meng is, is in the process of getting one together as well. And I was saying it's going to be interesting to be able to compare the Takam and the Ming one and so on. Um, since then I've done a bit more reading on the Ming version that's coming out. And it looks like the interior and the Zimmer are going to be sold as separate packages. You, you won't buy this kit and that's all going to be in it like the Takam versions. Um, it'll be all sold separately which I think is a strange move. Maybe Ming got caught off guard here that they didn't realise Takam was going to bring all these things out at the same stage. Um, so they sort of got caught with their pants down, sort of. But you would have thought, even if that was a the case, they'd say, "Okay, right, we're going to release it with the interior in it, or at least give you the option. You can buy one kit that's got the interior and Zimmer it, and you know, give you those options." But apparently, it's not going to be the case. There's just going to be the kit, and then you're going to buy those other the interior or the Zimmer it as options, like extras, like in extra packages. Um, I know Meng has got a couple of kits out where you can buy the kit that comes with the interior or the kit without the interior and buy it separate. Um, but yeah, it's just going to have to be a waiting game now, I think, guys, to see exactly which way they're going to move. But at this point, they, they are going to be separate packages, which is a damn shame. Um, by looking at the CAD drawings, and that, this does look nice. But then again, the Tacken ones, there's a few reviews out on the net now. They do look really superb. They've done a great job on them. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if um, men can find a little niche in the market there somewhere for some reason. But yeah, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see with that guys. Okay guys, it's time to show off your work now. Uh, I'll be putting some pictures up on screen here as I talk about these. Now the first one is from David. Uh, I won't mention any last names. Uh, these guys did give me permission to use their names but I still feel a little bit funny about doing that. Um, so we'll just say David. Now David has sent me um, some beautiful pictures of his uh, Colonial Viper Mark II with a photo etch, interior photo etch set with it um, and he's decked it out with LED lights this thing is just beautiful guys there's a forum that goes through like that showing him as he's, as he's building it he's sort of going to this forum and put the updates and stuff in it so go check this out guys, the link's below there this is a fantastic build, the work he's done on the lights in this thing and hiding, I forget how many he said now but there's just so many lights in there he had to hide him behind that dash and stuff this thing is beautiful as you can see by the photos, superb, some great weathering the lights just all comes together and to make a beautiful model um, thanks so much mate for sending this in, this is just great I love seeing sci-fi stuff, um, I like doing it myself, I just don't tend to get around to doing it as much as I would like to do it because I have too many other things on the go but thanks so much for sending this in mate absolutely beautiful work thanks very much our next modeler is Bill and Bill sent in some photos here of three of his models and the first one is a 135th Tamiya uh, Sherman the M4A3 Easy 8 and check out the model on this beast who doesn't love a Sherman beautiful stuff 
Uh, I love the mud. This one looks like it's actually been done with a Tamiya stick. I'm not sure Bill didn't mention in his, in his um, letter what, what he'd done the weathering with, but it looks like a Tamiya weathering stick's been run over this, that mud effect. Um, if you haven't used those things, guys, they are, they are really good to use. Um, but yeah, I love the Sherman, so yeah, thanks for that one, mate. Uh, he's also got here his 148 scale F4U Corsair. Some beautiful chipping effects on this. If you look at the wing roots here, um, some beautiful chipping effects going on there, showing that, that beautiful green paint underneath it, that chrome white paint underneath. Um, really, really nice. Love Corsairs too, that's one of my favourite World War II aircrafts. And last of all, Spitfire. Who doesn't love a Spitfire? Uh, so this thing looks superb as well. As you can see, he's got the, the exhaust stains running down the side there. Love the colour scheme on this. Beautiful colour scheme. Um, so thank you very much, Bill, for sending these photos in. Really appreciate it, mate. Great work. Um, yeah, keep them coming, mate. Okay, the last one's not so much a model. It's someone's workspace. Um, this one's sent in from Alex from Thailand. Um, Alex has just set up a new workspace and he was getting ready to go and the cat had different ideas, the cat called the time out on it, so this is his photo he took, you know, ready to work, but the cat sort of held him up. I think this is a great pick. It shows you that we're all human and then, you know, we all work in different environments and we all come from different places and we have different things and having a cat sleeping on your, on your workbench, great stuff. I just love this pick, guys. So thanks very much, Alex, for sending that in and thank you everybody that sent photos and stuff in. Um, I've also got a lot of emails with questions and things too and also got emails um, people saying that you know what airbrush they use and um, where they come from and all sorts of things which is fantastic it's, it's just great to, to have a, such a huge community and, and see where all these different people come from and the environments they model in and stuff like that so anyway guys thank you very much that's the end of this video but anyway guys thanks very much for watching as always sub below comment below um, keep them comments coming guys i love them um, and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching guys